Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is the general overseer of Sunrise Banner Bible Church worldwide with international headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is commissioned by God to provide the ministry of the Word of God and to disciple the whole world through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sunrise Banner Bible Church, we believe in God, we believe what God says. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Almighty Father, we thank you today. We bless your name today. And we adore you today. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us and preserving us. Father, we thank you for today, for the world you have put together for your church. We pray that as we listen to your word, you will bless us indeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless everyone Amen. and touch everyone. Amen. And this week will be a week of testimonies. Amen. Thank you, Father, for prayer answered. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can please sit down like a prince and a princess. You are highly welcome to today's service. I'm proud you are here today. And I'm glad you are here today. The reason is because of what the Lord has put together for you today. And if there is any day that you need to take the message serious, it's today. I'm going to be commencing on a series. And this series is a book I put together. And I'm going to be taking from the title of the book today. And I'll be on this book for some time. So I can finish it on message. And I'll give them go ahead to produce it. You are the first partaker of this work. And I know God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a real work. And it is a work the Lord has helped me to put together. And trust me, you need to invite people this time around. You need to be in every meeting because we'll be unveiling the world and the mystery of the world. Can you give me a round of applause in this house? No, 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 no. Maybe because I say give it to me, I give it to Jesus. I will be sitting down and be clapping to Jesus. Why are you behaving like this? Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Thank you very much. You can please take your seat. So, I'm looking at the message. Leverage. On holiness. Leverage on holiness. And so I put together this work and this book titled Leverage on Holiness. As a church, it is time for us to maximize and take advantage of holiness. So, I pray that as we look at this world and dig it chapter by chapter, the Lord will never let you and live in the same way in Jesus' name. Amen. We are looking at First Peter. First Peter in First Peter chapter one, and we are going to do verse fifteen, 
16. I will back it up with verse 14. We'll back it up with verse 14. If I were you, I would book for this book before it's produced. Because it's going to change story and it's going to change lives. Give me a loudest amen. amen. And so, in First Peter chapter 1, in verse 15, but as he which has called you is what? Talk to me. Come, today you will talk. Say, I will talk. Uh, we are going to preach it together. I'm going to do pure teaching messages today. But this time, I'll be doing more teaching messages than preaching messages. Is becoming very necessary that the church be taught so that mentality can change mindset can change and i pray god will help us as we teach in jesus name Amen. now look at verse 15 again but as he which has called you is what holy so be ye holy in all manner of what? Conversation. Look at verse 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. These scriptures are very key. The church needs to leverage its key resources and prosperity on the power of holiness. Holiness is God's nature and we are partakers of his divine nature. Is becoming a high time for holiness preachers, holiness believers, holy churches to leverage on this key. It is a key because holiness is resources and holiness is God. What is holiness? Holiness means absence of sin in a believer's life. Absence of sin in a believer's life. That's holiness. And what is God's nature God's nature is holiness. So, if you want to know God, you just know holiness. So, if you live holy, you are God yourself. And that is why the Bible says, in 2 Peter now, open your Bible to 2 Peter. I want to see everybody opening Bible, please. Second Peter, in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Second Peter chapter 1, in verse 4. We are by, are given unto us, exceeding what? Great. And what again? Precious promises. That by this ye might be what? Partakers 
of the divine nature having what? Escaped the corruption that is in this in the world. Through what? Through lust. Now, so if you look at this scripture, we become partakers of his divine nature by being born again. So what this implies is that the day I become born again, I become God. All right. Let me make it very clear. I am today Pastor Lossi Ngoa. The Ngoa is not my name. It is my surname. True? True? Good. You are not Ngoa. The reason is because my father never gave birth to you. Right? So, I own my father's properties. I have right over my, prop, my father's wealth. I have right over all my father's assets. Why? Because I am his child. So, I am partaker of his wealth. I am partaker of his name. So, I become my father. That is what happened to you when you become born again and live a sinless life. When once there is no sin in your life, you then begin to live in God nature. So you become God. What that means is that you are to live and operate as God. And I pray that today, if you are not born again, if you are not saved, you just get saved. Because that is the only way that you can become partaker of his nature. There are three things from the scripture we read that take you and make you partakers. Number one, believing in the precious premises. There is precious promises and you believed in those precious promises. Number two, being partakers, it means you are not born again. So you partake. Every man that is born again, every woman that is born again, partakes in his nature. So he begins to live via his nature. Number three, there is an escape. There is an escape. Look, for you to get born again is an escape. Think about the man you know in the world that is not born again. He's still in immorality. He's still in lies. He's still having problems. He still pains. Why? Though he may be a pastor, though he may carry title, but he's not born again. And because he's not born again, everything he does, he gets his right. He gets his wrong, sorry. Why? Because he has not been able to escape the lust of the world. I tell you something. If you are still in the world, living the life of the world, lost of the world, I mean, you want to do everything to just entertain people. Why? Because you are in lust. You are not saved. And so you make mistakes often and often again and again. I've got to look at this message under three subheadings. Number one, God to God's nature. God to God's nature. Two, God to God's nature. That's one. Two, creativity. Part. 
to God's prosperity. Creativity path to God's prosperity. Point number three. Concentrate on the future. Concentrate on the future. We take point number one. God to God's nature. We are called to reveal God's nature in our daily lives. Why? We were in the world. Lost in the world. Lost in sin. Lost in immorality. Lost in lies. And in crime. But we were called. It means we are called out of something. Into something. So, if I was fighting my wife before I got born again, if I continue to fight her after I claim that I am not born again, it means I have not been called. Because I have not left what I claimed I was called from. If I was a smoker, before I am called, and today, though I don't smoke in the public place anymore, but I have to put those things in, in maybe drink, and, you know, take those substances. It means I am not called yet. So, I am called to God's divine nature. Meaning, I am called to be like God. Meaning I'm called to operate like God. Meaning I'm called to exercise same power God exercise. Meaning I'm called to carry the same mindset of God. Meaning I'm called to carry the same mentality God's carry. This will happen to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. I thought I would have yeah, a good, good amen. Yeah. Now, as you look at our text in First Peter, Peter therefore called the attention of the church to say, Come, my brother, you're called. And you're called. To partake. You are called to be a partaker of his divine nature. So, you are called to holiness. Look at First Peter. And so, number one, write it down in your notes. Number one, called unto holiness. So, we are called unto holiness because holiness is God. I say holiness is what? That's God. See, if you like, call your name. Call yourself any name. If you like, say you are the right, most right bishop, most right reverend, act whatever. It's your business. The right you put to your title cannot make your life right. The only thing that can make your life right is that you're giving your life to Jesus. Is that you are carrying the nature of God. Okay? So, we are called unto holiness. First Peter chapter 1 verse 15. In verse 15, but as he which has done what call you is what? Holy. So we are called to be holy like him. He who have 
called you. Somebody called you. And so, if the man or the God who called me does not know where he was taking me to, he won't call me in the first place. Am I talking to you? If God who called me and take me out of the world did not have a destination where he's taking me to, in the first place, he won't call me. Now, so that solves the problem of worry. That solves the problem of my future. So, my future is guaranteed for the fact that he has called me. And he said, whatsoever is in his hand is what? Saved. So, if he calls me and is carrying me on his hand, I am very certain that destiny is secured. Am I talking to somebody today? So, if God calls you and he call you because he is holy, he's not going to be calling you unto lies. No. If God is holy, he's not going to be calling you into malice. God will not call you into betraying people even in the church. So, if God calls you, he calls you to be partaker of his own nature. To be him. Today, this church, we shall be like God. Those of you that are not saying amen to that prayer, maybe you are those people that is dragging us back. You want to live holy life. You don't want to join God. You don't want to be like God. You don't want to be like him. Then I pity you. Uh, say God is calling us to be like him and we shall be like him in Jesus name. Amen. Number two, God out of darkness into his marvelous light. God, look at First Peter chapter 2. He called us out of darkness. So, if I was operating in darkness, dark situation, dark life, dark businesses, dark ministration, anything dark. The symbol of that calling is that that calling translated me from darkness into his marvelous light. And this light shined and darkness does what? Comprehended it not. So, it becomes stupidity on the side of a born again, a holiness preacher to now become timid to darkness. Because you were already called out of darkness. You have no business with darkness. Your life can never be dark. Neither will your family be dark. Can I hear a glorious amen in this house? Amen. So if somebody comes to you and tell you, look, everything is going to be bad. This is going to be worst. This and that. It can't happen. You know why? Because you are no longer there. It says it translates you into the kingdom of his dear son. So you are no longer there. You cannot practice what you don't know. We need to leverage on this holiness. Holiness is the only platform that should catapult us into prosperity. So it becomes a wrong doctrine for a holiness preacher to tell me I should even prosper. Today, 
my prayer for you is that your mindset will turn around in Jesus name yeah. holiness is key holiness is everything it's everything and that's why it is breaking forth with holiness with holiness you can break any unbreakable mountains You're so powerful with holiness don't be in church a sinner you will regret your life don't play games with God you will regret it trust me you regret it you cannot be smarter than God you cannot see number two God out of darkness into his what marvelous light. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 in verse 9. Chapter 2 verse 9. But ye are a choosing what? Generation. A royal priesthood. Can you imagine? A holy world. Nations. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him who has done what? Call you. At the word darkness in the world is marvelous light that's what he did so until the b part of this scripture is done the a part of it is not a reality until you are called out you can't be a student generation you can't be a holy nation you can't be a royal priesthood so the only thing that will make you a holy nation is that you have been called. And I pray this will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, God to inherit blessings. Peter was reminding us, he said we should be, we, we should know this. That we are called unto holiness. That we are called into his marvelous light. And that we are called to blessing. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 3 in verse 9. 1 Peter 3 9. Are you there? Please, if you are there, talk to me. Are you there? Thank you. Look at verse 9. Not rendering evil for what? Or what? But what? Knowing that ye are what? Called. You were called unto blessing. And then it says that ye should do what? Inherit what? A blessing. What is the first blessing? To be partaker of his divine nature. Number four. God to his internal glory. God to his internal glory. Look at First Peter chapter 5 in verse 10. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. In verse 10 it says, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his what? Eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has so far a while, make me, make you perfect. What is the next word? Eh? Eh? Established. So you can't be called and still be a wanderer. Can't be called and still looking like you're a bastard. He called you to get you established. He called you to get you settled. He called you so that your heart, your mind, your being can be established. Look at it. Established. What is the next word there? Strengthening. 
And what is the last word? Settle you. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. So, when once we're called out of sin, and we're called out of the world and it's lost, we're called to be settled. We're called to be settled. Responding to this call, we completely change your lives and give you creativity. Also power, which is the nature of God. Yes. When most you respond to this call, the call of holiness, this call will automatically, completely change your man, change your being, change your mind, change your person, change your mental being, change your spiritual being, turn you and also give you a creativity power. This will happen in every life here today in Jesus' name. Yeah. I thought that we hear that amen loudest. Yeah. Because Jesus says, I will make you. I'm not calling you for you to be a bastard. I'm calling you so I can make you. You are nothing. That's why I'm calling you. So, I can't call you as nothing and you remain nothing after you answer the call. Okay, so let's look at Mark chapter 1. So, I cannot call you on a zero ground and you still remain zero. Meaning, there was no reason whatsoever why I should call you in the first place. So, we are looking at Mark chapter 1, 17 and 18. Are you there? Please, Mark 1, 17. Are you there? Let me see how if you are there. God bless you. Now look at verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, that's follow me now, and I will do what? Can you say it now? Make you. I will make you. I will make you. Alright. Something struck my mind while I was studying this scripture. Jesus said to Peter and Andrew now, he said, look, follow me. I will make you and I'm going to make you fishers of men. God cannot make you who you were not before he called you. Unless you need to study a new thing for him to make you. Now, so it means if I was a mechanic and I joined the Lord, he called me and I followed him. God is going to make my workshop more better. Not to close it down. What was the work of Peter before Jesus called him? Talk to me. Talk to me. Good. So, he fish, but the man fishing. Now, the man fishing man. Where did Peter experience the first prosperity? Oh my God, can you talk to me? Okay, okay. Where did Peter experience his first miracle? With God. Eh? He went for a fishing. He left the Lord and went for a fishing. And the Lord met him. And he says, I've thought all night. I can't catch anything. I can't find anything. 
And the Lord said, cast the net here. And the Bible says, there were what? Multitude of fishes. See, it's only a man who hates you that should tell you to drop your profession. Because God prosper you through your profession. It gets you more stronger through your profession. When he experienced that miracle, the second time Peter experienced a fantastic miracle was also on top of water. God will always use you perfectly in ministry via your profession. So, today, as you look at holiness believers today, when once they carry Bible, they say everything has ended. Their hands are locked up. Their leg has locked up. Their hairs are blocked. Their eyes is black. Let me tell you. Put your hand like this. Put your hand like this. Have you seen people that go to hospital? Those people, they put, uh, what do they call it? P.O.P., another name, another name. They put something here, they hang it on their neck, right? They put it there so that the bone can join together, right? I want you to talk to me, right? Good. If that hand stay there like that for three months and they remove that P.O.P., that hand can never straight again. The same thing happened to your brain. When your brain is no longer active, it becomes stick and dogma. It will produce nothing to you. That is why you don't do every work because of money. You do some work because you want to revive your brain. If your brain sleeps, your entire generation is sleeping. Do you know what it means? Believers today wake up in the morning and sleep. I say you are doing fasting. You are a fake person. Which fasting? After you are fasting and prayer, you will be poor. Because the brain is knocked off. It's knocked off. You just sleep there. You just stay there. You say the law will bring. Which of the law? He has called you already. He has makes you what? Partakers of his own nature. And God walks around the clock. If God is not working this morning, this day will not come. He's there on the system to program. When the day should appear, bah, it should appear. When, if God is not working, we should be signing approval on your prayer. I don't know your prayer is sent to his text. Come on, give me amen in this house. You need to be active. You need to allow your blood active. You need to allow your brain active. I cannot sleep for three days and I'm not read, I've, at least I've not finished two books. What am I doing? Anytime you are out of knowledge, even your message will become nothing. Am I talking to somebody here? You need knowledge. There is no day that a man is more than learning. You need knowledge. If you have a son and you have a daughter and you know that she know more than what you, what you do, you call her, you call him. There are things he need to show you. I was checking on something yesterday. I checked it to a level I couldn't get exactly what I was looking for. I called my daughter. I said, come, come and check this for me. Browse this, browse this, browse this. As she was looking for this, she was doing the research on it, and I was walking, and she came back, and said, okay, daddy, I found it, and I looked at it, and it was actually what I was looking for. You are not going to say because I am a PhD holder. She is undergraduate, so she can know there are things she can be very good in that you are not good in. 
Can you give me amen? So you become free. Stop this arrogancy. Send it away. See, anything you don't know, that thing is more than you. And until you know it, you can't do exploit with it. You need to humble and get knowledge. And knowledge is not enough. You're going to hear it here. So, he has made us divine nature. If everything God the Father was, it won't bring Jesus. And if Jesus was not part of that creation, we won't have the creation perfected. He won't bring the Holy Ghost. He will just say, I'm the God, the Father. I have everything. I have all the power. Why do I need all of you? Please go and sit down. This world won't be a perfect world today. It's a team thing. Can you talk to yourself? It's a team thing. Do it. Put yourself together. And the Lord will bless you. You did in Jesus' name. Give me great, great amen. amen. Point number two. Creativity. Bad. When I say part, I mean P-A-T-H. P-A-T-H. What does that mean? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. That's part. Now, it's part to God's prosperity. Now, if you look at First Peter in our text. In our text, First Peter. Look at our text now. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 15, it says, But as he which has called you, as he underlined that word, he, there is a personality in the he. As he was creative, as he was thoughtful, as he imagine things as he prosper. Same way he has called us into that divine being. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. If the church is not prosperous and if the church is not doing something and if the church will sit down, fold their hands, and become a liability, I'm wondering where we are going to get five trillion to build the camp. Because you are the one God will use. You want to be poor, put up your hand. You are hearing five trillion, you are running away. That's how many dollars? How many, how many billion dollars? Your money. This is your money, not money. That's how many billion dollars? Mathematicians. A few dollars. One billion dollars today is 480 billion naira. One billion dollars. So if we calculate it, maybe it's less than 10 billion dollars. And that is the money that you are, you are turning your head because you are trillion. God will take away fear for money from your life. Amen. Come on, give me amen. amen. <laughs> Anytime you have money like this, your body will be shaking. <laughs> your body will be shaking. That's money one, just one company in the United States will give to you and go and sleep. One man will carry it and give it to you. God will give us money. Amen. You know, see, you know, see, it's our pastor that is praying. I say, God will give us money. Amen. Your mentality about money must change you. Amen. Give me amen. amen. Your mentality must change. Our thinking about money must change. Because you need it. We are partakers of his divine nature. If Google would 2.5, 2.8 billion dollars or over that, 
How much do you think God was? So, so if God was quadrillions of dollars, then nothing will be wrong for us to just collect just small, maybe a hundred trillion dollars. Small one. God will give us money. Amen. Let me tell you. We are partakers of his what? Divine nature. So we are God. We should be living like God. So point number one. Creativity part to God's prosperity. Number one. Write it down. Creativity is God nature. So, if you are talking about the nature of God, one is holiness. The nature of God, two, is what? Creativity. So, if God wants to prosper you, it's not going to be by currency in your pocket. It's going to be by creativity. It's going to be by idea. Check all the trillionaires in the world. They make the money via ideas. In fact, God did it via ideas. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The nature of God number one is holiness. The nature of God number two is creativity. And that creativity is the path to prosperity. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In verse 1 it says, In the beginning, God do what? Created. There was that creativity. He created it out of nothing. Out of nothing. So, you don't need capital to create a business. My friend, you don't need it. There are people that will tell you, if you don't give them money, nothing can be done. It means the man cannot do anything with the money. See, look up here. The world is no longer looking for people. The world is looking for people that will turn water to wine. Those are the people the world is looking for now. The world is not looking for people who are carrying wine. No. That there is wine in your hand you are carrying. No. They are looking for people that will turn water and make it what? Wine. Jesus got to a marriage. No, no, no wine. No nothing. No money in his pocket. But wine was needed. But water was available. He turned that water and make it wine. See, you have eyes. If your eye cannot give you money, you don't need it. You have hands. Your hands can't give you money. You have brain. Your brain can't give you money. It can't create anything. You have like, and you're complaining. I was telling my children one of these days, I say, the day I respect brain was the day I met a man from here down. If I didn't go online now, you even see Pastor Nick was praying for a president. Have you seen it on online? Praying for a, a president who you with two legs, you can't pray for a counselor. With two legs and tie and coat. You're here. You're complaining, complaining, complaining. You have your Bible. You can't carry it and go to government house and say you are here. You want to see the governor. Let them tell you you can't see him. You say, I am a minister. 
they will ask you, minister of what? I'm a minister of the gospel. I need to see him. Why do you want to see him? I have a message for him. You go to him and talk to him. If they refuse you day one, day two, you come again. If they refuse you day two, day three, you come back again. See, my brother, anything you are not rugged with cannot break forth. Anything that is not rugged cannot break anything. See greater, see bulldozer. What bulldozer will bring down? Greater cannot do it. You need to be a little bit rugged. You sleep too much. And you wake up, you just say, God time is the best. Don't worry. God time they come, Abby. Don't worry. Keep sleeping. Before you know, you are 85 years. You are waiting for God's time, Abby. See, Christian life and Christianity, we need to start thinking. We need to start changing. We need to leverage on this holiness. We have God inside of us. We have no limitation at all. At all. Anywhere we can get to, don't expect a non-believer to get there. My prayer for us today as a church is that we begin to change and change our mentality in Jesus' name. Just tell me one thing the holiness pastor does not have. Only that boldness. Only that thinking faculty. Only that ability. Finish. If a man that's smoking their head can preach and put on like that. Why will Holy Ghost not make me preach better than him? No, a man with India hair. Eh? You say, see them, they are buying jets. They are doing this. They are doing that. Repent. Oh. Repent. If a man that is not holy is buying jet, you that is holy, you are riding bicycle. Is it not a reproach? They say, when we get to heaven, we enjoy. No problem. When you get to heaven, you can enjoy then. Me, I will enjoy here and enjoy in heaven. Can you give me an amen in this house? They say, don't worry, just relax. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. Everything will be fine. And you, you know how many times you've been angry with only in one week because of no money. You know. You know. No, let's not deceive ourselves. Am I saying the right thing? Will an angry man go to heaven? You know how many times you've been angry. You know how many times you can't even pray. You go to your knee, now your wife tap you. School fees tomorrow morning. You say, oh. Your hand paralyzed. Your leg paralyzed. Everything, your voice paralyzed. Everything, you become a normal man. You, you know. And yet, in a holiness church like this, when once the person mentioned prosperity, ah, it's backsliding. Now you the bass like, don't be me. Backsliding. What kind of backsliding? What is God nature number one? Holiness. Can I hear you? Holiness. What is his nature number two? Creativity. If God was not creative, you won't be here in this world today. True or false? In the beginning, God do what? He created. He created. Number two. Write it down. Write these things down. Anywhere I can stop, I'll stop there. Write it down. Number two, creativity is discovery. Anytime you're looking at the world, creativity, you're looking at the world, discovery. You're looking at the world, discovery. Let, let me tell you, discovering is seeing what everybody has seen 
and thinking what nobody has thought of. That's creativity. Creativity is seeing what everybody has seen and thinking what nobody has ever thought of. Take me to your village. I will make money there. I mean me, me. Take me to your village. That your village. I will give you money there. Take me to your village. I will produce something for you. I will show you where money is in your village. Take me to that place you are staying. I will show you problem. And I will show you how to make money there. The only difference between a rich man and a poor man is creativity. Finish. It's the ability for him to think something out of what everybody can see. The time you should let your brain have a process and think your own phone, thinking Facebook, that one, this one. Keeping the brain busy doing nothing. No results. No results. It only takes the grace of God for somebody to come back to preach the next day. You don't know when you remain poor, you are frustrating the grace of God on a pastor. Because it makes you look like you are not doing anything. People following you should be doing better than you. And you want to see them doing better. This morning I was coming to the church. And I saw how many cars were being parked outside. It boosts my faith. They were smaller cars. Some a little bit better. But it's a good start. Can I hear you say amen? amen. What will be my faith if I'm coming into the church? And I see black jeeps parked everywhere. You're coming in. Your mind tells you. You're coming to talk to people. Even you that is the preacher, you will start reading more. Because you know the people you want to talk to, their capacity are big. The better the congregation, the better the pastor. Can you give me amen here? When you have a congregation, you have a congregation that everybody is just one thing, you just come even though you're preaching for God so loved the world, it's enough for them. Nothing, no challenging word, no revelation, no, no dynamics. See, we need to think. We are holiness church. We need to think. I'm telling you we need to think. We need to think. Let's stop this thing we are deceiving ourselves. Years are going. Times are going. And we're not deceiving ourselves. Sit down there. This, as I was studying yesterday night, I remember my beloved. And I said, today, maybe after service today, I will see him and I will talk to him. See, I have a handwork. I have a professional business. Let's say I was a baker. I bake bread. I do something. That's a professional business. I don't need anything. All I need is what God has. And let me show you in the Bible. I'll show you in the Bible. So, when we are looking at number two, what did I say number two? It's discovery. And what is discovery? Seeing what everybody has seen and thinking what nobody has thought. Alright, so that was what we see in God. Now, look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Look at it. Look at it. People can be marching on it. The first day I got into a state, as a particular state I got into, everywhere is rock. And I got to the governor. The governor said, my brother, what can you get out of this state? Nothing is in this state. I said, your excellency, did you say so? He said, yes. I said, see money. He said, you're correct, though. I said, that is not just. I was passing so so play. Look at what I see. See money. I said, this other one, I passed this side. Look at money. I said, see money. And I told him, 
I say, I can generate 5 billion internal revenue for you here in this state. But it's in that state, the highest revenue is 400,000. Maybe 400 million. 400 million. It's carrying that butter. No idea. No idea. No idea. No creative spirit. They said they killed this nation. No creative spirit. See, any day you follow a man that doesn't have creativity, that day your life you are finished. Because you need a man to make you. Until the man creates something, there cannot be any vacuum for you to enter. Sunrise must be a better place to be in Jesus' name. Now look at that verse 2. Look at verse 2. And the art was without what? I want you to underline that. Meaning, nothing was existing. People could see the world. But the world does not have a direction. People move into a church today. The church does not have a direction. All he's doing is to run away. It means you don't have anything to offer. If you have had something to offer, you were there to give a directive to the church. See that place. And the earth was without form. And void. Meaning void. Just empty world. Empty. The world was empty. But God has something. From that scripture, what did he have? He have a voice. He has a voice. He did not have capital, but he have a voice. My friend, let's think. He did not have bank account, but he has what? A voice. Your voice is enough. See positive words coming from a mouth. You today, if you sit down, all you tell yourself is, are you sure it will work? Are you sure it will not work? Do you think this thing will work for us? Do you, don't you see? All you see is impossibilities. You don't see possibilities. You don't speak possibilities. If you were to be God, the entire world would have failed. He saw a world that was empty, void. And God said, He speak possibilities into negativity. See, we must change our statement. We must change what you have is enough for you to be anything in life. What you have, your voice alone, your eyes alone, your hands alone, your legs alone, you can produce anything out of nothing. Stop telling me if I have some money, I will do well. If you can't do well, then now that you don't have money, when you have money, you will do nothing. Absolutely nothing. How many people we don't give money to? When they say they need money, that will help them do something. How many of them don't do anything? Nothing. I keep telling you, there was no one naira anywhere in my hand. I keep telling you, I don't have money. If I had money, there is no way I would have borrowed thirty thousand. There's no way. I don't have. And I got that money. I put it into the business. I was so diligent with it, and I used it and created what. Thousands of people are living on today. You can create something out of nothing. Can you give me amen? amen. You can. 
See, there is another man there also. His name is called Daniel. Look at Daniel. He created something out of nothing. Out of nothing. He created something out of nothing. Brothers and sisters, we can do sin. We can begin to think on what we can create out of nothing. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, Are you there? Oh my God. I'm not hearing you. Are you there? Look at 9 verse 2. In the first year of the reign of Daniel, understood by what? By books. Not by Holy Ghost. Not by Holy Ghost. Every day. If newspaper come out, you can never buy. You can never sit down to listen to news in the morning. You don't watch CNN. You don't watch uh, Channel TV. All you are interested in is one junkata thing or the other. One junkata thing or the other. You are not acquiring knowledge. You can't pick up a book and sit down and read it finish. You can't think of how you can acquire knowledge that will blow your mind and give you a new mentality altogether. And it's not everybody that can be your author anyway. You must select your authors. You must know People you want to be like. And study with them. See that verse 2 again. In the first year of the reign of Daniel, understood my book, the numbers of the year, whereof the word of the Lord came to where? To Zeremiah the prophet. That he will do what? Accomplish 70 years. In where? If he has not understood this, we won't have eschatology today. You preaching eschatology today, it was because a man did a research and understood it. That was why we can do it today. The eschatology today that you own, that is now your property, Somebody labor for it to produce it. And he got it by books. He got it by acquiring knowledge. It was while reading, he saw the Lord. The Lord did not come before he started reading. It was while studying. He saw the law. My prayer is that our thinking faculty will begin to change in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the wall. Close it down. You understood it. You are the only one that can shut it down. A man who created the world has the capacity to shut it down. He developed the capacity himself. By himself. See that scripture. But thou, Daniel, shut up the world and see you the book. Even the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall be what? 
but yet your own is still the same way it was 20 years ago. In fact, it's, the, it's going back instead of going front. You want everybody to live the life of 1975. How do you want everybody to live the life of 1975? We're no longer in 1975. Knowledge has increased. See Bible. God say knowledge will increase. God say life will increase. God say life will make progress. Creativity will come. Better thing will come. The day of Apostle Paul, there was no microphone. The day of Jesus, there was no microphone. Today, why are we preaching with microphone? You are not talking. Somebody created it. If everybody have sit down and tell that man that look, the microphone you created is a sin. Today, see now I'm using microphone, I'm still sweating. So if I know you microphone, what if I happen? Can you give me amen? amen? Let me make good use of the few minutes I have. Number three, creativity gives your eye ability to see beyond the common phenomenon. Creativity gives your eye ability to see beyond common phenomena. So, what it means is that because you are creative, your eyes will see beyond your peers. Write it down. Luke 24, 31. Write it down because I need to run now. Because of my time, I need to do, finish this message. Second Kings 6, 17. Number four, creativity is imagination. Creativity is imagination. So, I want you to write down what imagination is all about. Imagination rule the world. People that are ruling the world today are people with imaginations. Imagination rules the world. That is what rules the world. What gives the world today is imaginations. And imaginations is more important than knowledge. Ask me why. Because Without imaginations and the ability to visualize possibilities, what will be the point of great knowledge? Nothing. So I give you now. I need to know about speaker. That's knowledge. True? Talk to me. True? I want to know about this speaker. Eh? I want to know about this speaker. That's knowledge. Imagination is, I want to produce this speaker. That's imagination. So, the man that produced this speaker, and the man that want to know about this speaker, which one is greater? So, without the production of this speaker, the knowledge I thought I have is useless. It's useless. And so, if I want to be relevant in the world, I should not be thinking about knowing about the speaker. I should be thinking on how to produce the speaker. When I produce this speaker, they will write my name. On it. It become my product. So. If a company. I got into a place. A few weeks ago. And I was asking them. I said is this also name that owns this place. He said no. I said but is the name that is on it. He said yes we bought the name. 
So I asked, so even top right, you see, is being bought. Most of the building you see does not belong to them. They don't build. They don't build. They don't put anything. The only is just by that name, franchise, put it there. And you pay heavily every year. And you still give them space free of charge in your building. They will come and put their thing. Why? Because you want to put their name. People build names. And that is what is wealth. Wealth is not I go learn how to do speaker. It's good. It will be okay. But why not go further to produce a speaker yourself? That's imagination. You sit down. What can I bring to this world? What can I produce? Where is the trouble? There is a research I've started now and I'm on it. And I pray God will help me to find a solution to it. Can you give me amen to that prayer? I'm trying to look for final solution to poverty in Nigeria. What will become final solution to it? Because when you ask what is the problem of Nigeria today, it's poverty. Majority. But it's not poverty of the pocket. It is poverty of what? Of the mind. Because they can eat. Go to Congo, go to some other country. You will see that Nigeria, an average Nigerian will eat better than people in those countries. Am I talking to you? So it's not really the poverty of pocket. No. It is the poverty of the mind. The mind said the brain is so poor, so low. So much of wealth around us, but we can't see it. We can't see it. And that is imagination. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. That was what helped God. He, 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 he imagined. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moves upon the face of the water. But if you see him, the world was without form. Now, so God sit down and see the world empty. And begin to imagine into that world. Okay, inside this world there is human being. He said, let them be light. It's okay, inside this void there is light. Inside this void, I can get a man. Inside this void, I can get animals. Inside this void, I can and start calling it. Meaning they were existing, but you can't see it. Because if they were not existing, they won't hear the voice of God. It is only thing that exists that year. So it means that we were all existing, but we were not manifesting. Am I talking to you? So, and he speaks into them. And they hear. And they start manifesting. Meaning that there are so much of wealth inside of you, brother. That is not manifesting. But they are there. You have tied them with so much of chain and sit down. You are not doing anything about it. You can provoke those things on the inside. You can provoke it. You can provoke those things on the inside. And they can be so powerful. You can provoke, you can provoke them. See, how many of you need money to go forward? You need money to go forward. Don't be ashamed. Put up your hand. 
You need money to go forward. See them. See. You need money to go forward. What if I say that is wrong idea? That's wrong idea. Let me tell you. Any day your mindset is when I get money, I will move. You will never move for the next 10, 15 years. You will be always one position. All the people that has made impact, they are the people that take a step before they look for money. Money does not confess. Your step confessed. Your creativity confessed. Your person confessed. Your action confessed. And then money will uh, follow. Take for instance. I want to start a supermarket. I have my mouth. Say mouth. Say mouth. That was what God used. I want to start a supermarket. All I need to do is to go and interact with people who are in the business. When I interact with them, and will agree. And I'm not going to interact with them to give me goods to my shop. I will sell and give them the money. No. You see, today, when I see some of the people from the East that are not doing very well financially, I wonder whether they were actually born in the East. Maybe they were born in Obode Ibo, they carry them go East. Because I've been to Arialia many times. I've been to Nocha Market many times. And I see a guy that doesn't have spanner. And he will sell spanner more than 20. Why a man will shop with spanner has not said 10. Have you experienced that? No, am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He didn't have a shop. He's not paying rent. He's not. He doesn't even print complimentary card. You, you have printed all the print complimentary card in this world. So I start by what they call growing capital base. All I need to do is to make the manager see me I'm relevant. I'm not coming to steal. I'm not coming for salary. Just let me register with you. I have two persons that will sign shorty on my behalf. If you give me anything and I go to sell and I don't bring back the money, hold these two people. Automatically, I have a shop. And I will, I'll be making contact. Now, I will now be packaging those things and do deliveries home. The supermarket, they are not doing deliveries. I have added deliveries to their shop. So, I'm coming with value. They will allow me to go ahead. Money will start coming. Money will start coming. As I'm selling, I'm selling with my profits. As I'm selling, I'm selling with my profits. Before you know it, I make money for myself. See, if you want, how many of you want to be a millionaire or billionaires? Don't fear. Put up your hand, don't fear. Put down your hand. How many of you want to earn salaries? Salary will not make you a millionaire. It may look very funny. No man with salary has ever been a millionaire. Go and ask civil servant, they will tell you how much they are owing. Before the salary come. 
Am I saying the right thing? No, talk to me. Am I saying the right thing? Go and ask them. They will tell you. Their problem. If they pay your salary one million, fake, it will not take you anywhere. Until you are creative, ask something to what you do. You can move forward. Let me run because we need to pray now. I think maybe even if I stop here, I will stop and then we'll pray. We'll pray. So, the world was without void and he speak imagined things in the void of the world and he created things and things worked. And so, if we can imagine some of you have a wife. You don't even know what your wife can produce. See, there are families your wife can do better than you. And if your wife can do better than you, invest in her first. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This thing I'm telling you is practical. If you have four children in the house and you know the one that will produce where the entire family can put things together and support that one. When that one do well, that one will in turn spread it and the family will come together. If a family does not have enough and the five person of that family want to start at a goal, they will, all of them will fail. It is a thing, it is a thing, I, I told you the story here, when I was to go to school and all of that, how my wife forsake her own and was supporting me first. Why? Because she knew that my kind of person, if I succeed, the entire family will be succeeding. My prayer for us today is that this message will not fall to the ground in Jesus' name. We will go home and start practicing this message. Am I talking to you? Let's practice it. It's, we are partakers of his what? Divine nature. That is God. God is creative. And we must be creative. God is holy. And we must be holy. And if we have that holiness, we must leverage on that holiness and do exploit. Is this message clear? Talk to me. Is it clear? Is it clear? Take this scripture. Genesis 39 verse 3. Genesis 39 in verse 3. 39 verse 3. 39 verse 3. It says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord makes all that he did or he does or he lay hand on to do what? Prosper. Okay. The Lord prosper him. He was not doing anything. See that Bible. You know we are deceiving ourselves too much. Too much. If you do 150 night night vigil, 150 night vigil, and you are not doing anything, the more the night vigil, the more you'll be poor. I'm telling you the truth. And I want to be very blunt. When you are doing something and your hands are busy, your brain is busy, your mind is active, everything around you is active, and you are living a balanced life. Your spiritual life active. Your physical life active. Your mental life active. I mean, I've lived that life. Have I not shown you that life? Yes, is he not who I am? Yes, you know, go talk. Yes, Those of you that know me, is he not who I am? Yes, That's who I am. If I take up the Bible, you will ever know this man is still walking. 
If I go to secular work, I work. I am living a balanced life and I want you to live the same life. And that is the only life that can pay. Stop this nonsense for doing. Even some of you, the coat you used to, to intimidate your wife in the house, nobody said a better coat. He said a better coat. He used to intimidate everybody, say, be pastor, be pastor, be this, be this, and blah, 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 blah. But you are doing nothing. You are doing nothing. Boy, you are doing nothing. Years are going, times are going. Life is being wasted. And you have a generation coming after you. You have a generation coming after you. And you just sit down there. He said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The boy now or the girl you had we grow. He come up and see his father. No house, no bed, no nothing. And as at that age, our brain, let me tell you, the children of today, their brain has 80% speed over people that were born in maybe 70s, 60s, 80s. You can't compare a child of last three years with people that were born in 80s. Even people that were born in 90s. They're not the same thing. The speed is 80% at every dispensation. And tell me, if you now sit down, you say you carry Holy Ghost, you don't even know how to garbage in, garbage out. It, it, to, to, to go on the internet, you don't even know nothing. And you say you carry Holy Ghost, you be with the Holy Ghost, and the girl, the child, already understand the meaning of Holy Ghost, already understand everything, and then you come to the pulpit, you'll be telling her nonsense about Holy Ghost, and then he stand up, and then walk out of the church. He say, this pastor doesn't know anything. He sits down there, his hands is busy with tablet. Their brain is smart. They're thinking, they're going far, very fast. As fathers and mothers, when we begin to change our mindset and start growing and go faster, very fast, before these children get to catch up on us in Jesus' name. Look at verse 23, chapter 39, verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he does and that which he does the Lord made it to do all, to prosper and that which he did he was doing something. I'll take you through the Bible. You will see that everybody was doing something. I don't know where this heiress is come from. And creep into the church and kill the church. And make everybody feel that when once you become pastor, you can't do anything again. When once you become a child of God, you can't do anything again. When once you become a child of God, your hands should be dropped, everything should die. Yeah, in your life. See the nonsense temptation I went through a few weeks, a bit few months ago. Just because I just I was in a hurry. Jump out of what I was doing. Two months before I returned back, everything. We won't make those kind of mistakes. You have to be very, very careful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to be very careful. You can't just be making those kind of dangerous mistakes. Because come to look at it. Let's say everything has crumbled down completely. What happened to the thousand that is following you? You put the life of everybody following you in jeopardy just because of your own uh, thinking. Live a balanced life. Be doing something with your hand and let your heart be serving the Lord. Let your hand be doing something and let this other hand be serving the Lord. Do a balanced thing. Don't say because you are doing something so the work of God should not follow. Or because you are serving God, secular work should die. No. Balance it. 
What did I say? What did I say? Balance it. Get the two working. Get the two working. And you'll be fine in Jesus' name. I say you'll be fine in Jesus' name. Number three, concentrate on the future. Please, I want to make this point very clear. What you concentrate on, we play 95% of your life. Anything you concentrate on, we play 95% role in your life. If more of my tension is on that of problem, 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 my life will automatically become problem life. Mind yourself or what to concentrate on. What you concentrate on can we either make your life more effective or make your life more useless. Concentrate on managing your future. That, is, that should be your business now. See, see God himself in Genesis chapter 1. God let when he saw the trouble he did not allow the trouble get him paralyzed. He concentrated more on the future and did very little with the problem. Let me show you Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form. That was intimidation already. And void. That was already a threat to his faith. To his faith. Now, now look at it. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That was a big trouble. Now, the Lord want to call something out of the earth, but the earth was filled with darkness. So, meaning that the more he would try to look for something to call out, the more the earth was darkened to an extent he may not see what to call. So, the problem was so high that go on a normal day should be concentrating on that problem and the future. But if you not go to verse 3, you see, and God said, don't see darkness and calling things out of darkness. So, he started concentrating on future and doing very little with the problem. See, any day you live a life without problem, any life without problem is not a life. That life is a dead life. But the ability to operate in the middle of problem, that is what makes you superb. In fact, if you want to hear on problem, come for Bible study. That is my message on Tuesday. Progress in problem. Progress in, in problem. That is what I'm speaking on on Tuesday. And see, and I'm going to show you how you can make progress in problem. Because if there is no problem, there is no progress in the first place. But that is on Tuesday. That's on Tuesday. So, concentrate more on the future. Do very little with your today. With the trouble. With the problem. If there is problem in the family, don't let that family, that, don't let that problem get you distracted. When once you are distracted, anything that has the power or the capacity to get you distracted become a master over you. Oh my God. If I have time today, in fact, the way it is with me, it's like I should be talking for five, six hours. But the time is not there. And I pray that God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give me a loudest? Amen. Amen. So it's important. It's important. It is very, very important. Now, if you look at verse 3, say, and God said, look at verse 4, and God saw. So, he was seeing things even in the middle of the darkness. So, in the midst of your problem, you can still see future. You can still see pros prosperity. You can still see possibilities. You can still see things working. Don't think that your problem is higher than the problem anybody has seen in life. In fact, if your level you see at the level of millions, 
Just know that your problem is the problem of millions. If your level is still at the level of thousand, your problem is still at the level of thousand. When you get to billions, you're going to meet the problem of billions. And when, when you get to trillion, you will meet the problem of trillions. When you have one kiss, you will meet the problem of one kiss. When you have two kiss, you are bound to see the problem of two kiss. So, if you run away with the problem of today, what will happen for the, the problem of tomorrow? And the more you run away from problem, the more you pile them up. So, why not solve them early so that you can have freedom early? I think I need to pray with you today. <laughs> solve them early. So, there is no point that this thing is meeting you, that this trouble is coming, don't kill anybody, don't die. You are partakers of God's nature. So, you are God. All the problems that come from the world, God carries it. It means you have the capacity to carry it. You have the capacity to carry it. Write down this. Write it down. You just write it down with pray now. Concentrate on managing your future. Write it down. And not your past. Don't concentrate on your past. Your past is yesterday. Your future is more important now than your past. Never judge people by your past. And don't treat people by your past. Your past has the capacity to drop you dead. Because your past will make you see everybody as evil. Mostly, maybe you are a young lady, you are growing up, and somebody messed you up. Every man that comes to you, you will see them as people that has come to mess you up. Your past is not your today. And so, never allow your past control your today. Get your today control your tomorrow. And your tomorrow should be more important to you than your yesterday. Forge ahead. Anything that has gone, has gone for good. What is before you, that is what is important. It's not what is before you. Reason be because your hand cannot wash your back, but your hand can wash your front. Use your hand for what your hand can do. And stop bothering your head about what your hand cannot do. Stop bothering your head, my friend, about what your hand cannot do. It's a past. It's gone and gone for good. When I continue from where I stop, let's stand up, let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. to hear you sing that song. In thy morning, in thy night, any time you may come. Make me holy. Oh. That 
that's God nature. Sing it again. Make me holy. Make me holy. Make me holy. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. In thy morning. In thy night. And in time. You make me. Father. Make me holy. I will leverage on it again. Make me holy. Make me holy. Make me holy. Hold on. In thy morning, in thy night, any time you make it. Lord, may me holy oh Lord. Father make me make me you make me Lord holy make me holy oh Lord morning in the night Consecrate my life. I consecrate my life. I consecrate my life unto thee, O Lord. Consecrate my life. I consecrate my life. I consecrate my life. Unto thee, oh. I want you to lay your right hand on your chest. I tell the Lord, make me holy. Make me holy. Father wants to be holy. Absent of sin in a believer's life. That's holiness. Can I hear you pray? I didn't say you should think. I said you should pray. And if I see you, you are not praying, you will tell me why you are not praying. Come, that sister there, you are not praying. I will mention your name from here. I want you to talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, make me holy in the morning, in the night, in the noon, anywhere where my mother is, where my mother is not, where my father is, where my father is not. Oh, Lord, I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. That is your nature. I want to live in your nature. I want to be like you. I want to live like you. Want to speak like you. I want to have holiness I can leverage on. I want to leverage on holiness. Give me holiness, Lord. Give me holiness, Lord. Give me holiness, Lord. Can I hear you pray in this house?
Thank God, some few persons are praying. If you can't pray this prayer, then you are joking. Because until you are holy, you can be powerful. Until you are holy, you can be strengthened. Until you are holy, you can be like God. Until you are holy, you can exercise the nature of God. And what is going to make the difference is that you are holy. Say, Lord, give me the spirit, the victory over sin. I want to live in a victorious life. Over sin, over anger, over atrocity, over gambling, over virus. Oh, Lord, grant me the victory over sin. I don't want to live in sin. I don't want to live in sin. I don't want to live in sin. That brother over there close to the door there, you're not praying. You need this prayer. You need this prayer. If there is any prayer you need, it's this prayer. The prayer of becoming God's nature. The door is open this morning and the Lord is calling people into his nature. And I want to invite you into the nature of God. And one is holiness. That is the very first nature of God. Holiness. God is holy. God is pure. God is righteous. God is non just. God is pure and holy and holy and holy. God is holy. In Jesus' name, we pray. We move to the second nature of God. The second nature of God is creativity. We want to pray and say, God, turn my brain. Make my brain useful. Make my mind useful. Father, in fact, from today, may I begin to think like you. Give me the capacity of your thinking. Your thinking faculty. Release it now. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray it like you have never prayed before. You need this prayer. Father, open my brain. Redevelop the capacity of my brain. God got everything in art by creativity, and you can get it done by creativity. There is no way like father like son you can get it out of anything all you can get it from is what god got it from he got it from creativity and that is the only source we can get it from in jesus 
name we pray. Open your eyes and look up here. I carefully and I'm looking at some of you and you're not praying this prayer. See, if I were you, this prayer, I will pray it with all my life. You know what? Like father, like son. You have the dean of God in your blood. Because you are not born again. And when once you are born again, you can only succeed the way God succeeds. He succeeds by creativity. It was through creativity he succeeded. He did not succeed by how much he has in the bank. And that is why I want you to pray today. It's, see, you are a norm. You don't need money. All you need is to be like God. Is to be creative like God. That is what you need. What makes a white man white man? Because he can think something out of nothing. I want you to lay your hand on your head. And you are going to pray this prayer. That hand on your head is my hand. You are going to make a decree. And say Lord my brain take it out. Do a surgery on my brain. Do a surgery on my brain. Do a surgery on my brain. Open your mouth and pray. If you need to cry today, cry to the Lord. Oh, Lord, do a surgery. Do a surgery. Oh, my prayer, Lord. Lord shall make you begin to create him out of nothing. Begin to pull out things out of nothing. Whoa! Holy Ghost! Carry out the surgery! Carry out the surgery! Your brain shall give you results. Your hair shall give you results. Shall give you results. Whatever you're doing, you're going to do it much more better. Your brain will give you resource. Your brain will give you money. You shall be more creative than you have ever been. You will live a Balanced life. A balanced life. No one sided life. A balanced life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give me a loudest amen. I want you to rebuke every distraction on your mind, every distraction on your brain, everything that holds your brain stick, that will not allow your brain explore, that will not allow your mind explore. That power is crushed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and crush it.
religious fanatic. Every religious fanatilism that will not let you think broad. I'll make you just think. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give me a loudest amen. amen. Last prayer. You're going to pray. God, take my eyes from my past. Take my eyes to the future. Take my imagination to the future. Take my capacity to the future. Oh! Open your mouth and pray the prayer. I'm tired looking at my past. I'm tired of looking at my yesterday. I'm tired of looking at my failure. I'm tired of looking at my story around yesterday. Take my eyes from the past. Take my eye into the future. I want to drive into the future. I want to move into the future. I want to operate in the future. I want to be friends of my future. Not my yesterday. Not my yesterday. Not my yesterday. But my future. I don't want to consider the past of my family. I don't want to look at the past of my father. I don't want to look at the past of my mother. They may have failed, not me. I want to look into my future. I want to look more into my future. I want to be depending on my future. My future is bright. My future is great.